In cybersecurity, artificial intelligence is benefiting the bad guys a lot more than the good guys. We are seeing this be problematic. Is this the end of the world? Is this apocalyptic? I don't think it is. So watch this video and I'll explain how the bad guys and good guys use AI in offensive and defensive um, technology and hopefully resolve a little bit of your AI based anxiety. So I did a talk um, at Cyber UK this year, which is a closed event for the cybersecurity community in the UK that's managed by the NCSC um, and the GCHQ. And my talk was around, it was called Fighting AI with Carrots, but I'll go through the punchline with you um, in a second. Um, but it was ultimately just where does AI sit in between um, in terms of the good guys and the bad guys utilizing AI. Um, so if you are someone responsible for cybersecurity in an organization, this will be interesting for you. Or if you're a MSP or a service provider how to bring AI into your conversations um, with your customers effectively. So I won't do the full presentation, but I'll just run you through the highlights. So um, the talk was around the fact that AI benefits the attackers more than it does the good guys. I heard it in 2023. I heard it in Cyber UK 2024. And I heard it multiple times and probably more times this year than any other year. Now, um, and one of the other um, expressions that we heard is you cannot AI your way out of AI enabled cyber attacks. Or you can't fight AI with AI. So just really talking about how things work from a good guy's perspective. Now, there is things that we can do in classification fingerprinting. We can build things to be a bit more secure by design, um, working a bit more in terms of detection and uh, response, sorry, and keeping the noise levels down and stuff like that. There's definitely things that we can do to help um, help ourselves using AI just for that extra supplementary cognitive benefit and also the ability to sort of, you know, for overstretched teams, it allows them just to scale a bit more. So there is good uses of AI by the good guys, don't get me wrong. Now, the problem being is the bad guys are having a field day. So you hear these stories, um, specifically in the UK, we've gone through a fairly big bout of particularly um, difficult stories for some of the big um, retail chains um, here in the UK. And we are seeing these, we hear all of these dreadful stories about AI, um, cyber securities, more and more people are getting hit. AI is definitely pouring fuel over that fire effectively. So, um, and we are just hearing this more and more and more. So. Where does this come into the conversation? So ultimately, what people have got to appreciate is that AI can just do exploitation just as good, if not better than what a human does, so or did, should we say. So it's always been known that effectively, uh, bad guys will hang out on all the vulnerability feeds. They will have like mass scan operations and showdown operations. So as new vulnerabilities come out, they will know those vulnerabilities. They will know systems that are potentially vulnerable to those particular exploits and they will run automation and human teams to be able to try and exploit. Once they know they can get in, they will work out how they can extract whether or not it's money out of the um, end uh, businesses or organizations or uh, whether or not they're after IP or something like that. So, so that's how everything's always worked. The problem with AI is that AI can do the exploitation part as well. So it will do the vulnerability assessment. That's always been a thing that's been automated. But when there's exploitations, it can use big GPT style exploitation database, fire exploits at vulnerable systems, but not just fire and forget these exploits. It can take telemetry back from what their systems are sending back and the AI can change stuff on a fly. What this basically means, it's a neat trick from AI, but what this basically means is that the AI um, doesn't can do most of the work where humans had to get involved, where humans would usually be involved earlier in the sort of kill chain, as it were. Um, now the human teams can wait until AI has exploited and confirm that the exploit has been exploited. And then the human team will get on um, to that particular organization to work out how can they extract the most amount of value. So it just really allows human nefarious teams or nation states uh, to be able to go even larger and run more automated operations. And when they find vulnerabilities and they see new vulnerabilities coming out, then ultimately uh, they can just use the AI to not just exploit, but take telemetry and do more exploitation until they get um, uh, until they eventually get into that particular system. So, you know, what does this mean? You know, it's, it means that there is no longer security by obscurity. It means that 
ignorance no longer works. Um, when you've got to rely on human teams to hack you more, um, you can get away with a bit more security by obscurity. Is this in fact apocalyptic? No, is the answer to that. And I hear this expression time and time again when I work with the folks at the GCXQ and the NCSC. Um, it's just a lovely expression of eat your greens or eat your vegetables effectively. What this basically means is you need to do those core fundamental things of keeping your system safe, making sure they're patched, making sure they're locked down, making sure that configuration um, is done correctly. This is a hygiene exercise. Um, with, you know, notwithstanding zero day attacks, a well locked down platform that has no vulnerabilities that is configured correctly using standard technology from Microsoft and 365 and things like that is almost unhackable by even the top teams on the planet. Again, notwithstanding zero days, it's the configuration, misconfiguration, management of vulnerabilities, the ability to get um, 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 hacked by uh, via your service desk by some, some kind of social engineering exercise. That's where people really get a fall short and that's where they end up getting hacked. If you've got a well locked down platform, it is almost impossible for you to be hacked. The problem is, is that most of us don't have these well locked down pl platforms. So the general advice that I keep hearing at these events is eat your greens or eat your vegetables. And that's just where Robo Shadow comes in just to do that full end to end from an external attack surface perspective right through to the agent, the internal networks, pulling in that data from 365 and understanding, triangulating all of your data. We spend a lot of time helping people heal in terms of patching, now Windows updates, um, config and benchmarks and things like that. So it's just keeping on top of all of those hygiene elements from a cybersecurity perspective to be able to keep yourself safe. So um, I can't remember, so I might have to fact check myself, but the time window of when vulnerabilities are disclosed to the average people getting hacked used to be weeks. It's now become days. So this is where you're seeing a lot more of these attacks where um, even here in the UK, Cyber Essentials, I believe it's 14 days. It's clearing out seven plus CVSS score vulnerabilities within 14 days. So you can't have anything that's that's older than 14 days. Now we are getting to a situation where the AI will sit on the vulnerability feeds. It will do the exploitation. It can come from days of exploitations coming out and sometimes it, it, it even hours, unfortunately. So, so hopefully that gives everyone a run through. Hopefully that will resolve some of your AI based anxiety as well we don't have to do anything else we don't have to um, hire a field of um, quantum quantum computers to, to to help us solve these problems we just need to get those core basics um, rolled out and managed and monitored on a daily basis to weekly basis and that's everything that you can do in the RoboShadow platform.